certain areas. That's the thing. Why did it, why did it why did this like go big again? There we go. <laughs> Press F to enter the giveaway. That's not that's not actually gonna be, but uh, that would be funny. Be back. We back once. I'm not gonna say that rest of that quote. Oh man, I I miss watching. No, I kind of miss watching Trick Two G. I'm sorry. I think I used to uh, Trick Two G is the reason why I used to like try to main Udir in season four or five, or like try to do I, jungle. I respect it. Or like yeah, it's like <laughs> Nick Kane, Nick Kane. Like, where is our team? I still think the funniest Strict UG clip is the one where he pops off and he's like, DK, <laughs> let's go. Where are you going, DK? And his screen is just black the whole time. They're a champion select already? What? We got no invite. I don't think that's the game we're supposed to be streaming. Ah, uh, I see, I see. They want death and, and doom, apparently. Whoever... But <laughs> we got to show love for other people, too. Wow, chat wants it. We won't death and doom. Hi, <clears throat> All right. So, what's up? oh? Did anyone watch the TSM? Like in the chat, who watched the TSM uh, C9 show match? Giveaway? No DD, no views. Chat wants you CSB. <laughs> we want. <laughs> oh boy. You're a C9 fanboy? Damn. Dude, that's some dedication. Like, props to UCSB. Yeah, it looks like the other game's still going on. So, we are just waiting for that right now. <laughs> Sneaky. More like snacky. And if I'm right? not wrong... For the sad event for the... Oh, no, it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> F. <laughs> I think we get okay. So this this is Once. either the last or the second last match streamed. We could get one more from losers round. I think Lawrence, your mic suddenly became like really loud. I I don't know what happened. Okay, I think it's fine now. So yeah, yeah, it's okay. fine. Cool, that works. It jumped like for one second. Mm. See, that's Brian sneezing. I'm just gonna blame it on Brian sneezing. Yeah, once again, like, this whole, like, break talk show thing is going to be a lot more streamlined tomorrow once we finalize um, the brackets for the elimination stage. Apparently, it's qualifiers, so it's like, how did they break it? How did they make out of qualifiers? It's just, like, the amount of wins and loss ratio, or? Uh, no, we have the bracket. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I'm also changing my mic settings right about now. Death and Doom. I miss Invader Zim. You watch that? Sh Did you watch the special on Netflix when it came out? Oh, the Death and Doom is the jungler for um a team that played last game as UC Sugar Babies. <laughs> is he single? Okay. <laughs> He's got his. <laughs> yes, he is, but you're not. <clears throat> That's a big, uh, interesting <laughs> turn of oh, events. Bruh, actually? Bruh. Oh my gosh, Nicole. <laughs> what do you mean you might as well be? Okay, I still haven't fixed my mic. Hulk Squeezer, Death and Doom. Seriously, what is our game? Um, we're waiting on the other match to finish. I've been added by, uh, the first team already. Uh, can you add me as well? I'm not in the lobby. What? Heck, remit as a feeling good. Okay. Uh, properties, there we go. Okay, am I still as loud as I used to be? No, you're fine. Wait, let me see. Okay. Talk, talk, talk. Um... Say death and doom. Death and doom. Death okay, and doom. Fine. Death and doom. Okay, cool. No democracy, weird champ. 
stop <laughs> casting UCSB what views drop to 59. Um, lol. That's an interesting Pepega moment. <laughs> I mean, isn't Goucher well, gaming live with OC right now or something? So. Need. <sighs> yeah, let's see. Switch. The new one that's currently pinned. What's the difference? But like, yeah, we're currently waiting. So, um, uh, how much more stalling can we do? <laughs> no. Let's talk. Like, um, what do you um? Ah, uh, let see. But bye bye viewers. Drop the channel link. That's his username. Oh my gosh! Please do not advertise in the chat. That is very BM. BM. Oh, I see. Copy. I see. So, give us a topic, uh, Lawrence. People waiting on it. Copy image. <laughs> Lawrence? Yeah, uh, okay. Um... Status. What's the status? Properties. Okay, uh, I'm getting, no, um, okay, um, I'm getting uh, messages that we are finally, that we should finally be getting into game, uh, the, the team has more or less finished playing, Honest... we just need to report that, and then we can start the next match, so it should uh, be very soon. Honestly, um, who's going to win sp summer split? Hmm, honestly, C9 just looks really strong. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone compares to C9, it's like, it's which hard is kind of sad. It's hard to talk about the summer split when NA has just been a, like, a clown fiesta the entire time. Like, you see, like, have you been watching, like, you've been watching the games where Freak is casting? You can see how much anger he, like, he is withholding because of how bonobo <laughs> NA, uh, NALCS is right now. And in terms of AD carry, yeah. um, honestly, for me, I feel like AD carry is fine. I don't understand where people are getting all like, oh, AD carry is super weak right now, but I'm just, I'm just having fine. If, if anything, I think AD carry is too strong. Um, really? Not, not, not in solo queue or anything, but in terms of like... No, no, no. Even if, even if I failed my diamond promos, like... Like, even if I fail it, I still feel like AD carry isn't an okay spot. I would say, it's, it's, I mean, it's not one of those solo carry games, but I think AD carries right now, mainly, uh, mainly Ezreal and Aphelios, I guess on time 14 does so much damage that yeah. they can just hard carry games by themselves. But yeah, like, the, yeah, the thing is like when you play AD carry, you aren't going to be um looking for, you're not, you're not looking for, I think, let's say if you want to climb, case, don't play AD carry. Fine. Like, AD carry is fine to play right now, in my opinion, but if you really want to climb and carry yourself out, then I don't think AD carry is the right role to play right now. Because there's just so much, like, carry potential in the other roles right now. Even support carries harder than AD carry because of the potential of roaming supports like Bard or even Nunu support. Like, have you seen Nunu support? Or it's like, I think it's like once you hit, like, a certain level, like, once your AD carry hits a certain level, you just endlessly roam. New new mid is pretty good right now too. You've seen Faker have been playing that a lot. Right now, AD carry is never good to play if you want to climb. Yeah, that's true. Not necessarily. Like there was a I forgot which meta where it was, like which year where like you had AD carries like Lucian like super strong. You can definitely like one v nine the enemy team with a fed Lucian. But 
Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, the AD carries are generally like AD carry is the most team reliant role, I guess, uh, in that sense. So it's not the best for solo queue. Um, well, yeah, because like in general, like you're you're, you're supposed to be uh, you're supposed to be basically relying on your team in the early game because uh, AD carry really shines in the late game, and the reason why people feel like um. AD carry is weak is because a lot of the games are fairly quick right now. The games are usually ending around 20 to 30 minutes. So you never get to that late game state, which is why AD carry feels like it's weak. That's true. Um, yeah, it, it, it's that we're taking different perspectives, right? Like between solo yeah. queue and the, the, the like professional because professionally because games uh, when teams are more evenly matched, it, it does tend to stretch out a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the question, <sighs> um, the question from John in chat, what teams we're going to be casting? It's going to be CU Boulder uh, and the winner of B -tan, uh, B Tan 108 versus High Spies, which I think the game is over, but the uh, the report hasn't come in yet, so we're going to need to just get that and then officiate it, and then we can get into the lobby. Indeed. Because, like, yeah, we're currently waiting. We want to try to give love to, like, as many teams as we can during this our time here. So we want to try to spread out, like, who gets stream time and whatnot. See you, Boulder, best team in tourney, Pago. Ooh. The Boulder agrees. Okay. Um, I do remember at least two of the players, I believe, on CU Boulder. Uh, because I'm old and, uh, <laughs> it was... Yeah, okay, let's start. Yeah, let's start there. Uh, and there was a uh, Carson and Night Raven that played um, during Pace uh, or Pac E, uh, which was a tournament that we had about two years ago where we invited all the Pac 12 schools um, and they represented CU Boulder then. Boomer Caster. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's completely true. So. But yeah, once again, we're just gonna apologize for like a lot of downtime we have. I know it's like kind of talk show right now, but yeah, we're go we definitely aren't like gonna be a more we're gonna have more action like coming into the next week, like not next week. What am I saying? Tomorrow, <laughs> self admitted boomer. What do you have to say to that, Lawrence? I I already self admitted that I'm a boomer. What what more do you want from me? You should play Tristana, dude. So we're currently, we're currently <laughs> waiting for the invite. Yep. All right, we're gonna be getting the game fairly soon, so eventually. Let, let's just say we're gonna get into game until we get into game. It, it, it'll it'll eventually. It'll work, I, swear. Uh, I don't even want to watch the gameplay. Is it because you assume that the boulder is going to be? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> You're just gonna assume that the boulder is gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's one way that, that, that's one way to read that message i don't know man um we got two games that have happened already we've got one more coming in from two teams that we have not seen play yet the boulder is confused by your statement <laughs> the boulder itself the boulder <laughs> just i'm sorry Look, <laughs> have you, you watch avatar right um no, I have not yet. You need to watch it I, but look, on Netflix. I, I know, okay. <laughs> you can't call yourself a boomer and not watch Avatar. Yes, I can. <laughs> the boulder takes issue those, with that. Guy. These two, wait, wait, wait. Those two statements are not exclusive. I don't need to have... Okay, that's fine. You can take issue with me <laughs> not watching Avatar yet. And... I still need to do that at some point. But you can't say that you you can't say that I cannot call myself a boomer because I haven't watched Avatar. That doesn't make sense. And I assume when we're talking about Avatar the, the Last Airbender because I've definitely watched uh, the Blue People one like way too many times. And the Blue um, Man Group. Yeah, the Blue Man Group. Blue Alien Group. Kind of funny how dated that movie got. Like it was supposed to be like this revolutionary, groundbreaking um, IMAX like movie, like on a big screen. And then once you go back to it, it's like, ugh, like, ugh. It's like intro. Like you could like the CGI is definitely like gone its course for that movie. Yeah, I mean it's it's fantastic for the time, right? It came out in I think two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the invite. 
Okay. <gasps> we're finally getting in game. And then we're going to. The boulder is excited. Oh, I can't. The boulder takes issue with that comment. I love that. <laughs> Wait, can I invite? Yay, okay. Carson! Which folder of mine are you under? Oh no, you made it. Okay, we're good. So, which? What are the names of these teams, my friend? Um, good question. It looks like we have a uh, CU Boulder on the blue side. Mm -hmm. Never mind. We're we're swapping. Oh. So we have CU Boulder on red side. Um. Boulder. And then the other team, I clicked the wrong bracket because I know what I'm doing. Okay, give me a sec. Mm -hmm. So Lego fanboy. Uh, and then it's BTAN108 on blue side. BTAN108? Interesting. What's the background for that name? Okay, so I think we're waiting on one last person. Yeah, we're finally in the lobby. Um, we're going to be getting a champion select soon. Currently moving this stuff so it looks nice and prepared because I like being prepared. I think it is prepared enough. We've got the people finally in the lobby. Oh my gosh, is that Moo Cow Oinks? <laughs> Lord, TKF, Heiner Schmitz is getting bullied. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. It's just, it's just like my childhood. Dude, this guy's name is legit LOL. Pretty sure those are fake L's, but it's a good name regardless. Oh, it could be IOI, you're right. IOI. Where is that from? I think it's a K-pop group. Ready Player or One. Or a former one, yeah. I remember Ready Player One. That's a good book. Decent movie. Yo, yo, this guy's Grandmaster. Look at this team. It's is stacked. fine. <laughs> this team is stacked. Okay. We're just waiting. Like We should have everyone here. and uh, They're getting into um, Champion Select Order right now. Do, 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 do. Or something close to it. It's fine. Moo Cow Oinks used to date me. What happened with that? Yo, he's got a Lambo? That's pretty good. Nice. God, I wish that were me. Got the Lamborghini Mercy. Uh, I almost just on I, I I almost just reflexively <laughs> said the <laughs> second line of that. <laughs> Who's running for president again? <laughs> Gotta get into it soon. Status report. Yep. We need some auction. Please show us some action. Oh yeah, like if you if you guys can, please support patients who need life saving treatments by donating to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Lymphoma Society. With the link over there, we have. Oh, someone's using the bathroom. Okay, we already had two massive donations, but you don't have to donate a lot. I mean, one dollar works. Ten dollars works. I mean, even a hundred, maybe a life savings that works too, but. Yeah, so, um, thank you, Elkless, for the, um, Piltify and chat, but, uh, we are working with the uh, UCLA Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, uh, so, you know, leukemia and lymphoma are both kind of life-threatening illnesses that are more or less terminal, and, uh, helping someone get that treatment does mean saving life, so, uh, donations certainly help a ton there. Uh, and then I guess we can take this moment to shout out our other sponsors making this uh, event possible, so we've got Microsoft, and we've got Red Bull. Um, 
and then a thank you uh, to you know uh, all the staff working at UCLA and UCSB right now for putting all this together. There's a lot of staff channels. They're all going bonkers, um, and we're all just uh, uh, yeah, they're they're doing. They've, <laughs> this has been in the works for a long time, and it's finally happening. And uh, couldn't be happier to see this. Okay, indeed. As they're still in the bathroom. We're Unlucky. still waiting for someone in the bathroom. That's a pretty. Uh, I think someone. <laughs> I mean, you're right about one thing. It is a number one, but <laughs> pretty long. <laughs> True. Pretty long <laughs> number one. <laughs> Dang. See, at this point, um, at this point, I feel like I don't want this to be the final game, though. I'm still hungry to watch more League of Legends, and but I mean, we will have a lot more of it tomorrow since we will be streaming from twelve noon to ten p.m. I believe. Is it ten, so? So, so both of our voices are gonna implode. Yeah, pretty much. So okay. There's that. And I'm also gonna be running Ultimate Bravery, um, right after League of Legends stream ends tomorrow. So if you guys wanna uh, be brave with me, hit me up in the in the Discord <laughs> over there. Oh man, I did I did an Ultimate Bravery stream for like five hours in Warframe, or not Warframe, uh, Vermintide, where I just randomed every single ability and every single talent that I brought. That was. <laughs> I remember that. Don't don't do it. Finally in. Okay, so we're, finally we're now in draft. In. Finally, let's go. All right. So we're gonna have the first band coming in. It's gonna be that Silas taken away immediately. Uh, Silas very strong right now. Um, you know he was played today in that C9 TSM match uh, to a great effect by Balls and Volley Bear taken away. Another very strong top laner. So right now uh, it's mostly top laners being removed. Silas is in in the mid uh, in the mid somewhat. Volley Bear is in the jungle somewhat. But we're going to see what that final ban, or sorry, what that second ban coming in from the blue side is going to be. But yeah, it's a battle of cows indeed. We've got Moo Cow in the top lane and Cow Dog in the mid lane. We'll see if they decide as lane swaps that they face against each other. That will be really fun to watch. Nautilus. I think Nautilus has seen the ban uh, in all three of the games so far that we casted. Uh, Nautilus is just a fantastic engage support. Has good healing potential as well, and just the, the single target guaranteed lockdown of the depth charge is extremely powerful. Uh, Diana is a pick that, or is a band that we haven't seen yet. Maybe they're just targeting um, one of the players um, on the side of Btan. Um, I'm not certain, but Diana most definitely. <laughs> I, I think it's definitely a target band. But indeed, uh, yes. Final band is. See you, Boulder is here indeed, and then just seeing that stacked like team just. Sh makes you shudder, like makes you fear, like what's gonna happen. But I don't know. For me personally, I don't like OPGing my enemy because I'm like, either way, like it's a game. I don't want to like see stats to like phase me out. But it looks like Jax and Fiddle Six will be the final bans, and although pretty solid bans, Jax more on a carry potential. Fiddle Six is just in general, but Zach is a very good power pick locked in for um, 108. Yeah, it's most likely going to be a jungle pick, but it's seen some presence in the top lane. And what Zach's going to provide is he's going to, he's going to, he's going to be a just a big beefy boy uh, in the in that front line. Uh, but immediately, it looks like it's going to be a Trundle being locked in by Lowell to counter it. That is a very uh, strong and Trundle counter. Trundle is, is just going to suck away all of those resistances with the Sutterfuge. And Zach's going to be not as tanky anymore. He's still going to have a uh, fantastic engage, but he's not going to be able to stay in the fight as long. And uh, that's going to be coupled with Ezreal. So Ezreal just still very strong AD carry, uh, safe blind, um, can output a ton of damage. Starting starting pretty much uh, from that two item power spike onwards of uh, a Sheen completion and the uh, mirror mana transform. Indeed. And yeah, oh, speaking of tank, they're just layering on the tank and the CC. Alistar is going to be the support for um, 108 right here. Um, Still pretty good, a lot of CC like knock up and whatnot. I feel like this is just prime for Yasuo. I'm just gonna see a Yasuo in a bit. How much you wanna bet? I'm it, it'd be spicy and therefore I'm down. Um, but a little bit about the Alistair. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's a little bit about the Alistair good. is it did get buffed. Uh, Q, uh, the pulverize now has I think two seconds reduced cooldown at all levels, mm -hmm. uh, which is really gonna be uh, which is gonna be really nice. Um, I don't remember what the breakpoint is before Q and W have the same cooldown, and therefore you can combo very effectively. Um, but it's two levels sooner. 
Yeah, look at the karma. That's actually a very good, like a very wise counter to the hard engage that um, 108 currently have. So like, little also bringing out safety and also more initiation for that trundle pick in the jungle. I assume it's going to be a trundle jungle, so. Yeah, and I assume it's going to be karma mid. It could go top. Uh, it's less likely to go support. But interesting um, counter to the Sivir is when the Sivir presses R and runs at you, you just press R, E and run away. Um, oh, they smelled it out. I predicted it and they smelled it out. Yasuo was banned away by Boulder. Rightfully damn. so. <laughs> I wanted to see it. It would have been spicy. All right. Um, let's see. What could another ban be? Both jungles and... You Belly. could, yeah, it looks like there's going to be pinching towards that top lane, um, or mid lane, potentially. I, th I think the Karma is going to be a solo lane, so they could potentially flex it, but, um, and, and then use that to pinch. So they're taking away the Yasuo. On the other hand, the Aurelia has been removed, so, um, Aurelia, mostly a top laner, could still flex either way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They could try to, or sorry, Bolivar. um, they being BTN, could try to pinch the support pool a little bit, considering they already have the Alistair locked in, they might want to take away uh, something that would be problematic. Uh, again, the Orianna being removed um, from CU Boulder, or sorry, by CU Boulder, um, is going to mean one less potential Wombo, because, you know, Zach jumping in or the Ball Delivery Cow are both extremely potent. Now, I um, really like this draft phase right now. You can definitely tell that both sides are trying to, like, they're, like, locking into, like, power picks, and they're also taking into account that overall Team Kong left so on uh, the one away side with the Trindamir final ban going over. Targeted probably to LOL, um, lol, but yeah, looks like there's a lot of move speed on both sides too. I mean, we'll see what, um, what Waldo decides to round it out, and it's going to be actually the Corky hovered currently for that mid lane. So it is going to be a Karma support or top lane decide, like, if they decide to lock that in. Yep, there it is. Okay, so with the Corky lock in, uh, right now it's tending quite heavily towards magic damage, uh, so I'd like to see something AD locked in. Uh, but it's, I, I guess it, I guess it's Karma, either top or support. Um, Ezreal, probably one of the higher magic damage AD carries, and Corky, uh, with his passive, I believe does 80% magic damage with his autos. Um, the rest of his damage is magic as well, between the Valkyrie, the Foster's Bomb, and the Rocket Barrage. There's um, a Wukong locked in. They're still definitely trying to commit to that Wombo comp. As you can see with the Wukong lock in, definitely going yeah, to this the top is, lane. <laughs> right now, this is what we call a bounce house, um, where sometimes your feet don't touch the ground before your screen turns gray. And the Ari lock in is not going to. She's going to be able to use the space created um, by the Zach Alistair and Wukong very effectively, kind of dash in and out, uh, try to pick off um, any stranded backliners by that CC. Uh, she's also going to have some pretty decent pick potential. Uh, and said pick potential could lead to just, you know, further engages. I want to um, see a Maokai. I feel like yeah, Maokai would run it out, but so. Set is looks like it's going to be... Nope, yeah, Camille. Camille! All right, so with the Camille lock-in, it looks like it is going to be a Karma support. Um, that's four auto-attackers. I... Uh, that's insane ninja tab value. Like, uh, okay, I know Trundle's like barely a champion, but technically all his damage is still auto-attacks. Yeah, like there's a lot of just single target attacks on the boulder side, but they do have the, like the, like the quirky package to pull out any team fight right there. But it's very interesting decisions that they have on the boulder side. I mean, like I feel that I feel like I mean overall we I feel like um. 108's team is just, the team comp is superior, like the team fight is just bonkers, like with the Wukong flank, we got the Ari and the Sivir just kiting out, and, but, Boulder has definitely have a lot more like, I mean Camille, when Camille gets ahead against the Wukong, that's gonna be a very scary lane to like, deal with, because Camille's just overall very strong. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there, uh, the team fight, <laughs> man that's scary. Um, the team fight coming in from Btan is uh, definitely just terrifying, and I don't think CU Boulder has the tools to stave off uh, one of those heavy, uh, any of those hard engages. Uh, what they do have is going to be the ability to to play uh, a four-one uh, or even a one-three-one uh, quite effectively. 
Um, Corky having a decent amount of mobility if his package is up, and Camille just being very strong in the side lane, uh, stronger than Wukong, uh, I think. Um, it's gonna be able to outduel him, and so so maybe we could just see Camille split push the way to victory um, as a win condition. But Otherwise, yeah, what, what I'm imagining I'm seeing from Karma is probably like the the mantra E and the redemption to counteract that hard engage by um, 108. Yeah, they really don't have that much peel. Uh, it's basically limited to Trundle Peeler or tr Trundle Pillar, and I guess some speed up some Karma. Um, Ezreal is uh, very good at kiting, a little bit nerfed, uh, said kiting ability this patch, uh, the Arcane Shift cooldown. I just said words. <laughs> none, hey, of words that came, good. none of that turned into a sentence. But um, the point is that the Ezreal is still good at kiting, but he's worse at it than he was before. Um, Corky, in a, in a relatively similar situation, in that he does have self-peel, but it's on a uh, relatively long cooldown. Um, Corky is still going to be able to do a ton of damage and just absolutely shred through um, the Zac and Alistair and Wukong, provided he hasn't been CC trained to death. Um, so really it's a matter of can they lock up the two big uh, damage dealers of CU Boulder and then burst them down before they are in return just kind of DPS'd down. Indeed. All right, so we're currently at the last minute. Um, chat, give us your predictions. Who do you think is going to be taking away the win for probably, I assume, is the last game of the night? I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that. because. But then again, a lot of the games have been going in just at the 20-minute mark, so we may have time for one more game after that. But apparently we have some love for um, BT108 right now, like loving that comp. So much tabby value once again, like as stated by Lawrence, wonderfully put. True. Uh, yeah, and I can't even say I can't even say massive uh, merc shred value on the other side because a lot of the CC is knockups. Uh, mercs aren't going to do anything against the Elant uh, elastic slingshot. It's not going to do anything against cyclone. It's not going to do anything against headbutt pulverize. Uh, really, it's only going to do something against um, charm. Indeed. So yeah, we're finally out of the spectator delay. The lead client is going to be loading up. Um, I think I favor. I do like. I do favor BT 108's comp most definitely. But I feel like this is a more of like a level disparity. I'm kind of worried if the level disparity between the 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 players is going to be playing out and ultimately see like CU Boulder is going to be. I just like overwhelming to play against. I'm just hoping it doesn't go into that sense because I'd like to see a game. Especially with how wombastic this comp is. That's not even a word and I made it up, but like... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the fun part about wake making up words is if everyone still knows what you mean, you get to just start using that word from now on. No, is it wombastic or wombastic? Wait, oh, I know it's... Because I know there's wombology, there's um... Wom no, that's Wumbo. No, I'm mixing Wumbo and Wombo. See, I'm mixing my Wombology and my... I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It's the last game of the night. And here we go. We're <laughs> finally back into the Summoner's Rift. Time controls are down. That is down once again. I'm going to put the scene transition. And here we go. We're only going to be facing against BT108 on the blue side and CU Boulder on the red side. Yep, and we got some uh, early pings coming out towards that bottom jungle. Um, right now, on the side of Vtan, all sticking together, all bot lane, while uh, <clears throat> there seems to be a fan coming out, maybe for the traditional five-point star, but we do have all five members right now hovering in that bot river, coming over. It's going to be spotted out right now by the Ezreal. No, it's not. Now it's spotted by the Ezreal. He's going to have to run away. The That's flash the flash comes arm. out. Uh, the the full body flash does miss though, and Ezreal uh, levels E first to get out, so it doesn't even burn flash. He's gonna be a lot weaker to level one, but. Yeah, that was very interesting. I need to order things for a second, and the game is paused. Uh. What? What? <laughs> the all chat's all coming in, everyone uh, looking for a restart. Uh, just what? gonna mulligan that, you know, it's okay. Why? Flashes, flashing's overrated. I don't. I don't think it's actually. I don't think it's actually a thing, right? It's not a restart. We're, we're it's not. not we're not mulliganing. Can wait? Can they mulligan? No. They can't mulligan after that. That's just. No way. 
I feel like I, someone just like restarted It's okay, the it's computer. okay. We're just, we're just memeing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're gonna have the, the match resume. Right. Um, so that's that's some action that we've got coming in level <laughs> one. Uh, did not have a kill, but we did have kind of an awkward start for the Ezreal. He had to go back. Um, it's fine, still only a minute into the game, but really it is the loss of the two flashes that might prove to be pretty big. Alistair and Ari. Uh, Ari has no escapes until level six, so that could be punished. I feel like Alistair, it's not too much of a punish because he does have the hex flash. So, but yeah, yeah. so the Ari definitely need to play a bit more safer in that mid lane. Alistair is going to lose some of his ability to just kind of aggress. Uh, he's still going to be able to hex flash from Bush. Um, I guess an interesting thing, uh, thing to note is that this is actually Glacial Ari coming in. So Glacial Ari, even uh, in my opinion, is a little bit weaker than uh, some of the other Glacial champs. Um, Vygar being most prominent in that sure Ari has like the dash and uh, more, assa uh, more assassination potential. But like when you go the Glacial build, you don't quite do enough damage. That is true, but I feel like it's because they're relying on the huge AoE damage on the Zac, the Wukong, and the Sivir, so... And plus, having that utility and the extra slow is very good against the Karma pick. Where it's just, look at the trades in the top lane, my is back and forth, by the way. Charm Ooh, and Cowdog hitting two mark. first. Get some shred from that Gatling, just does more damage. And uh, meanwhile, Wukong hit, uh, hitting level two first. He's now going to have to exert some of that pressure onto a... Uh... Lol, and maybe zone him off the wave a little bit. Dude, just we have Solagoy who is finally hitting level 3 with the double, the double buff. Going to look for a gank here on top lane. Wukong is a bit overextended, so he may need to be careful. He does not smell it out. Oh, here comes the do frozen domain. Yeah, Solagoy fanboy up. going for the pillar. He's going to force out the flash from Screw Mon Monitor. Um, and I'm going to have to admit, it's been like two years, and I'm still not certain if it's Solago or Soligo. I know it's only the fanboy, but it still feels... <laughs> a little bit awkward right here. Um, Hepa Pulverize is going to come in onto Night Raven. He's going to flash as or he's going to uh, use Ignite as well. Um, but there's not much follow up possible from Fluffy and Gora, so that trade is just going to end there. They take a little bit of harass on the backswing. Yeah, that's a pretty like pretty liberal use of the Ignite over there, but you can see the power of the Hex Flash that um, Bold CU Bold would definitely have to respect here in the bot lane. And look at this, LOL is going oh. in. Missing that uh, hook shot a little bit, kind of awkward. That's okay. Um, surprisingly, the it's the Sivir lane that's actually getting pushed in. Uh, she's just not able to hit the minions as much. So even with the spear wave player, just uh, being zoned slightly by the uh, significant poke of Ezreal Karma, super annoying to deal with. Yeah, especially since Alistar does not have flash right now, it allows Ezreal and Karma to position a bit more aggressively in that lane. Going in, like Trundle is going to be looking for something in the bot side jungle. Um, currently just getting the skull right now. There's nothing new on the farm right now. Um, Ezreal and Karma still very much playing aggressive. That's a very nice arcane shift into the essence flux. A little bit. Yeah, of damage as soon over. as uh, as soon as Night Raven popped the uh, spell shield, or sorry, um, forced out the spell shield. Um, MMO player could or knew that you know that was just. Poke that could not be traded back or that cannot be blocked. And uh and Gora right now pretty low on mana hasn't been able to get the value off of the spell shields for the mana regen, which is uh, also kinda awkward. Also a double ward coming into that bot lane bush. Yeah, you can um a little bit of misvalue. They're fairly safe from ganks at least. Because they're so close in turret, but Ooh. going in again is Kakuni, uh but Night Raven just kinda walks off. Knows that there's no actual kill pressure. Look at this. But now it's Zach rotating over. Kind of does. Clearing out, out the ward. ward and League client froze for some reason. Is it frozen for you too? No. What? Why is it frozen for me? League, please. Don't worry about it. I mean, worry about it. But oh yeah, no, it's frozen. What? Is it? Oh, it's probably gonna take a. It's probably taking into account the delay, like not the delay, but um, the pause. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> it's back uh, on. Well, what time are you at? Four fifty-seven. Yeah. Uh, nope. What time are you at right now? Okay, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move back a little bit. To... No, no, no. Let me move forward to the present. Okay. Just move all the way to the I'm present. At, I'm at five thirty. I'm at five thirty. All right. And it looks like the action in D. You have a little bit of poke going off, and Fluffy and Gora and Kakuni are gonna start like feeling the brunt of that poke. Fluffy is currently low on mana. Um. 
I don't Just... know if it's... Yeah, I don't know if it's correct here to go for the Doran's Blade start. I think we can poke super heavily. Uh, the Doran's Shield is definitely a pretty decent option here for that Sivir. Uh, oh, I meanwhile... agree. Yeah, meanwhile, Mukao Oinks is going to be here uh, in the top lane looking for a gank. Um... We're Monich here, just kind of trying to bait the Camille right now. He's charging, he's going in, he's gonna jump in, does not quite land in. The hookshot is gonna be able to get him out. Dexon Strike does still Wait. pull the Camille back. I feel like they may have to be careful a bit too, because Camille is currently level 6. She can easily 1v2 that, in my opinion. Uh, oh. Wukong is 6 as well, so I think oh, it's... I, yeah, yeah, like I don't this... think... Yeah, despite um, Sever and Alistar getting the full brunt of that poke lane of Ezreal and Karma, she's still doing a fairly good job of just CSing under turret. And it looks like um, because of that, the jungle is showing in the top lane, uh, Soligo is going to get the jungle uh, and the dragon, the first Infernal Drake of the game. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, uh, just with bot, uh, bot lane pushed in so far, uh, Trundle knows that he's safe. Uh, bot lane's got priority, so he can just take that dragon. And yeah, Sivir, uh, currently, at, well, not quite ahead in CS. Uh, she was before Ezreal picked out that one way, but Ezreal backing and getting a tier. Um, so sacrificing, just, sorry, um, picking up no combat stats as Kakuni is just going to defend Mukao Oinks from, uh, and secure that red buff, hopefully for his jungler. Gonna blast cone over. But yeah, about that tier, um, it sacrifices a lot of your combat potential and stats. Uh, in favor of, you know, getting that Mirror Man a little bit sooner. Um, honestly, I don't know if it was the back timing, but if he had the gold, I would have preferred Ooh, to see maybe flash. a Sheen. Yeah, he's gonna get engaged on. He has to burn that Arcane Flash, he, or Arcane Shift. He has to splash away now to prevent himself from getting stunned by that Alistair auto. Yeah, so he's gonna make it out alive, but that is a flash burn, so, you yeah, know, Unfortunately, Mukaus. Mukaus did not quite hit the mark with the, um, the what is that? What is the Q called? Well, like, just a Q. Uh, stretching Strike? Yeah, Stretching Strike, here we go. But look at this, Wukong's gonna go on aggressive underneath the turret. Camille's gonna take oh. one turret shot, that's a lot Both of damage the going off. There's a yeah. second one, and first and blood! A second turret shot is actually gonna finish off Wolf for first blood, so just going a little bit too far, playing, like, just on the wrong side of that turret range line, um, is gonna get punished and does go down. Uh, well capitalized on by Square Mon Monitor. Yeah, I like the stat checking over here, like, Square Monitor definitely knowing the absolute limits of his champion to punish LOL on the Camille. Which is actually very much needed gold going over since he's currently behind like 20, behind like, at least 20 CS. Yeah, um, that kill is gonna help equalize the lane. Uh, both top laners now having Tiamat and also, uh, Trundle is currently securing that Rift Herald. See a ton of ping coming out, but with Zaka being kinda at half health, it's not gonna be able to do anything. It's just gonna be Rift Herald going over Night Raven, even is rotating over. Uh, the secure for his team, and uh, what lane do you think this is going to get placed in? Hmm. I feel like I want to see it timed with the next dragon, if it's up for that long. It's currently too... Because they still have a lot of time to to save it on. Because like, I don't feel like there's currently a priority lane in to use that right now. They could also try to go for a dive top lane and then pop it, since Wukong does have that early kill. Yeah. Uh, it could potentially just be uh, kind of an injection of gold. Uh, Camille is going to go in for another trade, but the, oh but the decoy kind of stops that pretty effectively. Very nice clone. Oh, and Kakuni finds uh, Cowdog. It's going to get chunked to half, but he's got the Unbreakable Will, so I don't think Cowdog is going to go any further to try to secure that kill. Um, he's going to walk back in the lane, get zoned out slightly by the Ari, but he shouldn't really miss that much CS. Um, speaking of CS, Cowdog has gotten himself a nearly 30 lead um, in a lane that's largely un, uh, unaffected by jungle presence, so... Yeah, I think that's just the price that Ari has to pay for, like, being forced to burn that early flash. Like, those early levels are definitely in Quirky's favor as he's just able to auto-attack with his passive, the uh, Shrapnel, I believe. Yeah, w whatever it's actually called. Um... Oh yeah, uh, Corpus just kind of has 110% ratios on his autos, doesn't he? Or mm -hmm. is that not a thing anymore? Okay. Yeah, he still has the extra damage. With the okay, it, it is still extra damage. It's just also converted to magic damage more so. Um, but yeah, he's gonna back. He's gonna have Mirror ma uh, Mana Mune already, so he's gonna be able to stack that a lot faster. He'll probably have uh, Mirror Mana around the 20 minute mark. Um, right away in the mid lane. 
Yeah, and combine that with the fact that Ezreal is just innately better at stacking tier, um, they should get their transformations around the same time. And at that time, it's going to be a massive power spike for the side of CU Boulder. Once Not again, Night Raven, or Night Raven getting engaged on, and he's going to be caught out alone here. Flashes, but I don't know if there's a way out. The move speed is just too much. The Selena fanboy is here to try to turn something. Luke out wounds, also less bounce. Tries to jump on an uh, MMO player, but New Bora has teleported in now as well. Does not have the JLP to slow, but does have the Spirit Rush. Is going to get the charm onto Corky, and Corky getting chain CC is going to die to a final auto attack, following through the flash. And then another last King Shot securing the kill onto uh, Ezreal as uh, Ari gets chased down in the back. So overall, that's going to be, I think, three for just one. Very worth it for the side of uh, B Tan. Yeah, very oh, worth Sliga it. Fanboy indeed. Getting Getting caught out a little bit now. Um, is he going to be able to walk away? No. Uh, Zach is still here, and that's just an overstay. So, uh, catch that to 4 to 1 now. Or 4 for 1 now. Yeah, and that's actually very unlucky timing for um, CU, like, CU Boulder, especially with the Earth Drake coming up right now. Very good, well played by um, Kakuni and Mukao to set up that gank. We'll be getting, and this is actually very good. Like, the Earth Shake is exactly what they need to have the extra resistances on top of being super tanky already. But of course, it's not gonna be the Drake of the game. That Drake of the game is actually going to be the Cloud Drake once again for this match. And Ooh, that Cloud Drake is gonna be huge for the side of, inside of B Tan. Oh, limit test, limit test. As we see, more fighting top lane. Um, Cyclone was used. And that's just burned. Uh, it's gonna be popped again the second cast. And that's gonna be just enough to stave off the full dive. But that's still gonna mean the Rift Hill gets used up here. We give Lol that injection um, of gold, maybe snowball him ahead further so he can win the side, uh, side lane later on in the game. I like the one from Alistar though, denying. The, I like the one from Alistar and uh, Aru here denying the dive from the Corky. <laughs> they were definitely planning to dive that hard. Yeah, Night Raven uh, decided the match as well. Um, but the thing about getting that Mountain Drake is it gives just a little bit more resistance and maybe that maybe that means the difference between life and death for, for the Sibber. Um, considering that really the only damage that's going to be on her is uh, the Camille. Sure, Camille, uh, most of Camille's damage is packed into one giant true damage auto attack, but you know, just a little bit might mean Fluffy Angora stays alive and is able to cleave down the whole team as Lol is now just uh, doing a ton of damage and does now have the ultimate the Wukong is now trapped, and I think he's going to go down right here. Has the flash. Flash is followed, but auto attacks the turret. Oh, and uh, Square Monitor is going to be able to walk away within an inch of his life. Yeah, Square Monitor definitely being punished for having the ulti down. Uh, Ezreal two-shot barrage goes off, but does not quite hit the mark over there. But props to this Wukong, like Square Monitor really knowing the limits of his champion, flashing away just in time. <laughs> But he will end up burning this teleport in to get back into the lane quickly, but it will not stop Law from getting one more turret plating before he dips. Classic Slingshot being charged up, going up to Cowdog, does not quite land, Searching the Strike misses as well, so there's gonna be no gank to be had there. And uh, yeah, no, that ends there. Nice poke. This is the, the Mystic Shot, unfortunately. Yeah, things are actually becoming quite a bit Topson, Jacob. We still have um, Soligo coming here looking for some action in the top lane. They do have the Camille teleport that's been burns right oh, away. Now, so wants in. now the Wukong has no ultimate. He's being trapped in. Or has no ultimate, has no flash, has been trapped in by that pillar. He's gonna go down. Overextending just with no vision is gonna yeah. mean his death. And uh, Camille is gonna have some free time. Maybe he can take down this turret considering there's no turret plating on it anymore. Yeah, that is very well put gank by Soligo punishing like Wukong for still not having the ultimate up. It looks like uh, looks like we have a little bit of like contention here in the jungle as Soligo is able to try to pick off this blue buff away from Mukao. It's pronounced Soligo. Soligo! There we go. But look at this. Mukao is going to be Apocalypse Bounce. It's going to be forced away. Flashes away the slow. Meanwhile, in retaliation, Yun Bora is going to pop the um, Hextech to stop them from advancing any further. Yeah, and right there, we see the power of uh, GLP combined with uh, Goku Augment just creating a slow zone of you do not move anymore uh, and creating just enough space for the Zac to get away. Thank you. Um, but chunking the jungler that that low is going to be second Rift Hill goes over. So again, they're going to be able to probably use this to knock down a turret. Oh, and oh, player is not going to get dove. And with an Alistair, there's really nothing he can do. 
Yeah, that was a, I feel um, like that was a bit overkill, but... <laughs> oh, poor, poor Ezreal right there. But no, this is not a rerun. This is live. But yeah, please enter the giveaway if you type exclamation point Microsoft CC. We're giving away another Hextech chest and um, some stuff like there, so... But yeah, they should be able to get a turret in exchange. So it's currently one for one for turrets, and the gold is still relatively even. These two teams are playing very well right now. The oh, but the package is being mid. used mid, uh, but directly into a charm. Uh, Cowdog is going to be charmed under turret, take some damage, return a little bit back, but both mid laners are going to end up chunked. Uh, package down, that's pretty significant, as that's Corky's true ultimate ability. Um, it's, not his, it's not his rocket barrage, it's, it's that package. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have a game today. Woo! It's gonna be exciting. But right now, let's look at this. We got um the we have the Cloud Jake actually coming up in 30 seconds. We'll see which team gets priority first. Right now, Channel's actually backing. He does have the empowered recall from the Rift Herald, so because of that back, um BT108 should have priority coming up for this dragon. And it looks like Karma actually wants to race down there for a vision. Does see Kakuni out with the, the ward as Kakuni tries to stop. There's a little, little support war going on here in the mid lane. <laughs> trying to fight for vision. <laughs> Love seeing that. Yeah, but with Kakuni's team just getting there sooner, it will be won by Kakuni. The teleport now coming in from Yunbora just to set up and get that priority on the dragon. Uh, and then uh, being a Glacial Ari, he's going to be able to cut off any of the uh, entrances to that uh, dragon. So dragon... Overall, it's just going to be given up. Uh, Lowell has no teleport, so this would be a 4v5. Instead, they're going to use that Rift and trade it for the mid lane turret. Um, let me see, are they going to engage right here? Oh, yeah, they're, they're looking for it. They're open to use. That's going to be a flash uh, Alistair combo going in onto the Corky. And again, Trundle's in the middle of it all. He's going to take out Kakuni. He's now in the uh, Night Raven that's caught in the middle of nowhere. Saliko Sample gonna flash away with a Sliver Hell, but a follow flash is gonna secure his death. And then Cowdog getting jumped on by the Elastic Thing Shot. Lowell has now made it to the fight, but he's been charmed and he's uh, gonna pop the Cell Division, but go down here. Uh, MMO player now trying to. Oh my god, gets the snipe with the Boomerang Blade. Filthy, uh, Fluffy Angora, that was filthy. Uh, and that's gonna mean his Mitra going down. Night Raven might have overstayed as well, but does not quite have the damage to burst him down. Uh, so that's still overall gonna be a one for four. And if you're yeah. Kakuni, yeah, you take that all day. And just like that, the game goes heavily into BT's favor right now. Very wonderful engage, season. punishing um, CUB, CU Boulder for that overextension to get that mid turret. And let's see the guild. Here's the gold, by the way. You can check the gold right now. Currently have it's actually very even across the board. We do see that because of that team fight, Sivir has a significant advantage as well as. Um, yeah, I think it's still pretty even. Like, st the bot lane currently has a gold in their pockets right now. Yeah, so we're right now having almost a 2,000 gold lead over Ezreal. Uh, it's going to be able to pick up almost the Affinity Edge. So he's going to be doing a ton of damage. Um, just critting for, I don't know, like a third of your health. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it's Camille with the majority of the advantage for the side of uh, CU Boulder. So, you know, I, I think uh, they're just going to have to go more and more into that side lane win condition and just let Camille split push. Got the Knight's Vow going onto Ezreal, giving him a little bit more survivability along when he's gonna finish that um, Iceborne Gauntlet. But look at this, like despite the goal, like despite the kills being heavily on BT's favor, which is 10 and 3, the gold is still even. Yeah, and that's just the all the CS leads uh, coming into play right there. Uh, we see 40 in the top lane, 40 in the mid lane, 20 in the 20 in the AD carry position. Yeah, like, um, he's definitely the CS differential coming in clutch for uh, CU Boulder right now. But right now, and it's actually very scary, like, Matt, like... It's very scary that they're down both in kills and... Uh, they're down both in kills and turrets, and they still have a chance... They still have the gold lead, actually. <laughs> they're currently up by 5.5k. Yeah, that's just farming. Uh, when you have a team with uh, 280 carries, really, you want to farm. Um, on the other hand... Considering that Angora is going to be the primary carry, is a very accelerated Sivir at this point. Uh, she's going to want that farm uh, funnel turret. She's going to want to hit that 3-4 item power spike, where Sivir can have, you know, basically 100% crit and just uh, obliterate the team. But Saligo Fanboy is going to be engaged on uh, Mukao getting subterfuge and getting chunked. Sub yes. Uh, Lauren? Vision, but 
it's not quite in position. Corky does have teleport at least. I'm gonna see what they choose to do. Um, Storm Monitor gonna back and try to get a teleport in as on the hunt is popped. Uh, Baron's gonna reset, so I don't oh, know I about this gonna... attempt. I'm saved. Oh. No, I'm saved. But yeah, go well, going. Lol's gonna um, get found by Ari, and she's gonna chunk him out a little bit. He's gonna have to flash away. Uh, but he does have the teleport, so worst case, he's gonna just back and heal. Uh, meanwhile, Storm Monitor finding uh, Ezreal and Trundle trying to take that turret is going to, you know, scare them off. And now they're going to have to run for their lives with the rest of the team rotating over. But yeah, it's like, I, I noticed the stream did go down a tiny bit there. Sorry about that chat. Um, they basically, um, BT108 tried to go for Baron, okay, but back. they were like pushed off right away. But yeah, wait, speaking of Baron, here it comes again. And it looks like the teleport yep, is actually one more time. Out. Uh Kakuni is below half and Mukao Oinks is also quite low and there's a there's potentially Ezreal and Karma Folk raining in. Kakuni is super low, can totally just be finished off by two shot barrage should it come flying his way, but uh, uh MMO player not gonna throw that out. I but mean like, he doesn't I feel like know, that was so. worth that was worth because they forced to teleport out of Ezreal, so they forced one of the summoner spells away from um CU Boulder, especially right now when the next Drake is coming up within twenty seconds. Yeah, um, the win for the win for CU Boulder is that uh, the enemy team didn't get Baron. That's a pretty big win, and uh, the loss is, of course, as you just mentioned, that teleport. But it is the least valuable teleport, as Ezreal is most likely to be the one uh, at objectives in the first place, uh, as Porky and Camille would be uh, more tended to go towards the side lane. Uh, but now we have uh, both teams setting up around this dragon. Once again, River Control has been handed over. Um, Twin Shadow is also going to be presenting just an annoyance, uh, another slow zone. And once again, they're going to have control of the They're going to start off a dragon and just too far away, having been zoned off. Uh, instead, two Boulder are going to run towards the bear and maybe start that up. Camille is also pushing in the top lane. Getting a tier 2 turret right now. So it's a dragon exchange for potentially Baron. It is pinged out, but look at them. All of CU Boulder, uh, uh, not also, all of um, BT108 is currently in the middle lane. And they're not going to be here to contest this just yet, but the Baron does not. Go yeah, they down finally quite a bit funneling in. They the peeled off. Uh, and Yunvora does take a little bit of damage. Does pop the Spirit Rush. Gets, tries to flash Charm, but it does go wide. Uh, doesn't get the slow really either. So it's just going to have to back off, uh, burning all of the resources. But at least, you know, you stop Baron. Uh, Camille now backing. Just everyone going for a reset. <sighs> trying to get back some. Uh, trying to back, get some wards, secure vision, set up again for uh, this Baron, which is probably going to be where this game blows wide open. Indeed. Like here's a here's a really interesting part. I feel like the reason why um see your boulder are playing like safely is because like right now they only see the kills. Like I don't know if they're taking into account like the item differentials. I like or I don't know if they realize how strong they currently are because they do have they're still up in gold. But but it just shows it goes to show you like how much like mental potentially like the number of kills can have on your team. That's just me. Yeah. Um I think the greatest value of kills uh, as it goes later and later into the game is that a person is off the map uh, more than anything else, um, which gives you obviously the power. Now we have three people sitting in a bush. Yep, just gonna be the flash onto Cowdog. It's not chained perfectly, so he does so he is able to flash out and then uh, another heal being used, try to run at them. The Sligo fanboy is now in the middle of everyone just tanking and running away. Um, does create the space needed for Cowdog and Asian MMO player to both make it out. Uh, they will both have to burn flash, but. You know, I just said that uh, most of the value of the kill is in the player not being in the map, and they're still on the map. Lol now is going to try to chase down Storm Monitor, but he does get the slow, so he's going to uh, also get the Hextech Ultimatum. And now trapped Ooh. in here is the Wukong. Probably not going to be very long for this world, but Hookshot does interrupt, but still Did does go down. And uh, Camille that? now Shut having removed Wukong is going to have a free teleport should she want to. It looks like she's going to back the heal up. Uh, Kakuni is super low right now. He might just die to Baron. God, the amount of times Baron has been attempted in this game okay. has not even called yet, like picked up yet. And that could be easily be attributed to like they don't really have too much DPS, if anything. Like they have a lot of poke on both sides. But I mean Sivir, once he gets the, um, the zeal item, should start to have getting picking up that DPS for the Baron. But Yeah, but yeah Sivir like, currently sitting so on uh, 70% crit. Yes. Um, once she does have that zeal, it's just, it's just, it's gonna be a hyperscaling sever. 
Um, the 75th damage crit, but not exactly the attack speed that she wants quite yet. Mukao is going to force Saligo out of his jungle. Just to pick up a little bit of some chicken. Nom 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 nom. Yeah, to right be now honest, it's kind of like uh, on too much. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, but quietly, we have gotten a soul point. Uh, B Tan had picked up uh, three dragons, so the next one is going to mean uh, Cloud Soul going over. And Cloud Soul is huge. Like, with the amount that they want to engage, having the extra move speed and having the extra move speed on all, along with the old cooldown, considering that all five champions are heavily reliant on their ultimates, um, it's going to be massive in just allowing them to force fights over and over again and just run down and just slowly burn cooldowns and then eventually um, have enough cooldowns be down to just run down uh, CU Boulder. Yeah, and I kind of feel for CU Boulder right now, like, like it's honestly like I understand why they're respecting the comp so hard is because like that 5v5 is ridiculous in favor of BT108 and despite them like ha having these like completed items like the both the mer the mer manas on the both carries as well as the Chin items like it's it's a very scary like it's just very scary to play against so and I do feel like they need to have like Camille getting a pick in order for something to happen in favor of uh, CEO Boulder. Yeah, that's definitely true, but um, you were talking about the itemization on both AD carries uh, for CU Boulder, and they're only going to get stronger from here. As you're going to have that Bork soon, and that's going to uh, do wonders in kiting against the Zac and the Wukong and so on. Uh, he's going to be able to slow them, speed himself up, and do percent HP damage. Uh, and the Corky uh, going for what looks like an Infinity Edge, likely. Um, is also just gonna start doing massive amounts of damage. Yeah. And look at this, like we have 23 seconds. We have the Ghosties popped to try to catch them out and get Vision into the Dragon Pit. It's currently favoring um, BT-108 right now. They have priority in the Dragon. Camille does have the Teleport should she decide to use it, but looks like they're not even gonna Oh, Corky's running down with the flank with the package, so maybe he could come in from behind. Looks like both teams are stepping forward towards mid lane. Camille's on the inhibitor turret right now. Yeah, and it's actually drawing Wukong away from, so it's currently a 4v4. Koki does have the package, which um, BT108 will definitely need to watch out for. They are starting to pull away the dragon. Both top laners do have teleport. Camille's popping the teleport right now, going on the south side. decided to step forward. Camille's teleporting in. Wukong's teleporting as well. And Saliga Fanboy now running in. Kuni's kind of caught out, and he's going to go down, but he immediately traded over. Uh, Wukong now gonna be locked up and burst down. Meanwhile, Cowdog going super deep. Uh, gonna get the assassination onto Ari and then go down himself. And um, Cell Division. Yeah, just flashing in with that Q, but still going. Leads his team to kill the Cell Division and is barely gonna finally trade. Uh, both autos uh, connecting at the same time. Gonna mean a three for an ace, and that's gonna stop the Dragon Soul from being taken. The um, initial take soul definitely in return. The initial engage by the Camille Teleport is definitely what tipped the scales into CU Boulder's favor. And this is very good for them because they are denying the soul for another five minutes. Especially, and such like we have, this is where like the carries are starting to shine. Like Ezreal, like like you see how much amount of damage Ezreal is pulling off, not even having the Blade of the Road King just yet. But that was yep. very well played by CEO Boulder, just like punishing on two fronts. He had Camille like. Right after taking the inhibitor turret, just teleporting right away. Like very well, like very well thought out the size of plays by them. Yeah, the beginning of that fight was kind of just Trundle getting beaten down and then um, Alistair getting beaten down on the other side. And then uh, when both top laners dived in, uh, um, Lol was able to basically nullify the Wukong quite a bit and then burst him down. Uh, meanwhile, Cowdog just took the opportunity to ju jump in and uh, fight the entire backline by himself, picking up a double kill uh, and going down uh, by himself. That's still worth overall and it led to the win of that fight. Thunder Pillar was good, it was very good. Like Soligo with the clutch Thunder Pillar. <laughs> wasn't really clutch but it was like, it's just a very good Thunder Pillar in general but like here at Gago they're gonna be fighting for vision around Baron once again a little Baron dance is going out. Blue buff is gonna be going to Yumbora right now. And Camille, look at Camille just commanding split pressure. Currently levels, the first one to hit level 16. No one can 1v1 her currently right now. And Siva is going to be the one catching the wave, which should alleviate taking, pressure like, in the top side of the she's jungle. She's taking like five of these turrets by herself, I'm pretty sure. Well, like uh, going to be taking the crunch right now as well. You, and you saw the just, amount just, of damage. Pressure going, this pressure generated by this Camille is going to 
uh, give the ability for uh, see Boulder to just take control of the Baron. Uh, looks like they rotated over to mid, but you know they could have had more Baron vision control if they wanted it. It looks like they're looks like they can't quite get it until they have a couple more control wards and Night Raven's uh, sweeper comes back up. Now they're once again playing the Baron Dance again, taking control. Very nice. Yep. They backed off, but that's uh, the Ardent Sensor completion uh, for Night Raven, so that's huge. Um, mm. Considering the number of auto attackers on the side of. Uh, they're doing it. The Boulder. Uh, but in that, in that time, Baron's been started. Teleport is used. Uh, Corky's already here. And yeah, Corky's just going to be raining down rockets, and they don't really want to be taking that and Baron damage, so they're going to back off once again. It's like a fifth Baron attempt this game. Uh, going to charge up in the last swing shot right now. Uh, not quite jump in, though. I feel like at the moment, um, CU Boulder, they're not even, they're not trying to rush anything because they know that Camille has a split pressure and they're patiently waiting for that next pass it, package fight. And especially like, and look at this, Corky's level 16, Camille's level 17 right now. I mean, Wukong's trying to like desperately hold her off, but they look at this, the split push is actually quite amazing. It's actually amazing that they're not, um, trying to initiate against, uh, 1v3, I'm not the 3v, like the 3v5 the, the in the mid lane. Not 3v5, 3v4. It would be a 3v4 in the mid lane. I feel like they should like try to push something if they know that these teams are split pushing, especially with the team. Oh, jumping down. in! What is that damage? Uh, does not get the final auto attack onto Yunbora. So Yunbora's still gonna make it out alive, but that one crit from uh, Cowdog taking Oof. almost half of the Ari's health. And that's just gonna And uh, force... barely uh, limp uh, limps away as well. He's got that's the just, Warmogs at least, but it will It's just gonna force BT away from the bird, and now that look at this, it's 32 minutes in. Both, like, the damage dealers are online for C Boulder, and look at how fast his bird is just gonna be melting away. I don't think they can contest this. This is just way too far right now. That's a that's a Baron going over to C U Boulder. Yeah, so you know, six times the charm, guys. Um, but yeah, with the Baron, that's gonna make the split push all the more terrifying. Camille now hitting level 18, has double lifesteal items along with uh, an executioner's calling um, to stop, I guess, some uh, some of that lifesteal that Wukong and Wukong's picked up and Sivir potentially has if she's running Legend Bloodline. Um, oh, here comes the package. Look at how shiny it is. It's like gold. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I can see that de there's a gold bath, it's huge because you can definitely see all the C CS differentials across the board. And I feel like that just boils down to like the, um, the tendencies that like the these diamond players, diamond master or whatever players that they have on CU Boulder's side, they're so used to just constantly farming up. And despite um, BT108 having the superior comp, like it just goes like... Shows, it just goes to show you how important farming is, honestly. Yeah, and, and just a quick side note is that Cowdog, now having picked up the Infinity Edge, um, has now deemed himself stronger uh -oh. uh, in the eyes of Saligo fanboy, so the Night Spot will now be on the Corky. Uh, as Corky just kind of uses the package, uh, I, I assume he was running out or yeah, something. Square um, Monitor does have the teleport, and then they want to try to pressure the Baron oh. currently. Um, Oh my god, look at the damage. That's pretty good chonky stuff. But currently, um, CU Boulder have priority for this dragon right now. They have the Baron empowered minions from yeah, Lol. This is an open inhibitor, lane. so Lol could just kind of decide to go in. He's gonna tap Square Monitor on the back. Um, and as the rest of the team rotates over, this is just gonna be a free dragon. Mukao Owings may be going for a, a Desperation Steal, but it's gonna be chased down right now just by the Corky. Uh, flashing forward. Oh, not oh. quite enough damage. Oh, oh but he's gonna be popping that Cell Division. That's gonna mean his death. I don't think the rest of his team can rotate over in time. Cowdog just gonna slowly auto attack him to death. He will go down. Cowdog has to pop that stopwatch, uh, but he's still gonna make it out alive for now. It's not hit by any of the Ari damage. He's trading back. Legal Fanboy is creating a ton of space by just standing on top of Gore, but he will be attacking with the lamb. He's gonna go down. Meanwhile, Lowell's diving both Nexus turrets. Uh, having killed the inhibitor, he's just gonna try to. Okay, that's a lot of life skills. Jesus Christ, he's all the way back to full health. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Dive more Nexus turrets. Uh, meanwhile, oh. he's gonna get chased down a little bit. Has been slowed by the Glacial Augment, um, but he's still gonna be able to hook shot out of there. And meanwhile, uh, Asian and more players now gonna be taking uh, another turret in the mid lane. So, that's. A one for one kill trade, an inhibitor, and a turret going over, I think is the end result of that. And I gotta commend Square Monitor for holding his own 1v1 against the Camille and not dying to that. Because I feel like if he were killed there, that would have costed the game entirely in favor of CU Boulder. So, 
for Square Monitor to know his limits there is able to prolong the game for a bit more. Which is actually gonna be huge because this this dragon should be like contested. It is a soul on both sides. Yeah, you Although, need a seventh Drake, and I believe uh Baron is wearing off soon. No, Baron has already worn off. How much move speed does Karma Mantra Inspire Cloud Soul give? Um yes. <laughs> yes gotta, is the amount of move speed. It's gotta go fast. Uh it looks it looks like it's sixty percent. But with mantra, um or sorry, it's it's sixty percent mantra E. Uh but cloud cloud soul provides an extra ten percent at base. Whatever, everyone's fast. That's I think that's the moral of the story. Um Corky now has a phantom answer on top of that, giving him another uh extra, I think. 600 health to work with in a fight. I feel like at this um, that's point... That's exacerbated by more fleet footwork procs, but... Yeah, so the Corky is fully online. We see how much damage he can output during these fights. And uh, with the Trundle protecting him, and... Uh, sorry, the Trundle and the Karma protecting him, it's very hard to take down either AD carry right now. Yeah, I feel like at this point, the bet, like the, I feel like the best case scenario for BT-108 is just try to, like, plan a death push. Because the uh, super minions are going to start to be pushing in. I mean, currently going to have Baron coming up in 138, like 130. So they could still afford to be a little bit longer, but... Well, this is still an extremely powerful Sivir right now. She's 9-1. and one. Uh, A bit, bit down on the CS, but still 4 item completion. Has the 75% crit chance and a, and a last whisper to boot. Uh, so, you know, does output the damage. And we saw earlier just a ricochet doing maybe like pretty much a thousand damage combined across the four members of uh, Sue Bolda over there. And uh, most importantly, doing almost 400 damage to Karma. We're gonna oh, see a bit initiation. of an engage right here. Kasuni jumping in. Uh, Mukao Oink didn't get denied by the elastic slingshot. So well played by Sligo fanboy. Making Sligo proud. But meanwhile, Lol is jumping onto the Wukong. Wukong getting chunked down super low, but Lol has now been jumped on. He's still going to trade back, and uh, the Koki has now arrived, and that's going to be a near ace. Yun Bora, the only one to make it out alive, considering he wasn't even in the fight. And with the minions on the Nexus, that's going to be the end of the game right here. Yeah, I feel like if, I feel like if they... Oh, Night Raven gets charmed wow. and assassinated. Uh, Cow Dog is taken very low, but does not quite go down. And yeah, that's going to be the full ace, and with uh, 20, 25 seconds until anyone respawns, uh, Nexus is going to go down here, so congratulations to uh, CU Boulder for pulling that game out in the end. Yeah, let's go check out, um, let's go check out the grabs. Yeah, like, that was actually a very solid game. It was a bit slower towards the middle, but then you can see how, like, how, how much restraint that CU Boulder have knowing that they had the scaling comp. Knowing that just they just had to like play back, scale their tiers in order to like ultimately become unstoppable near the end. And I I do have to commend Sivir. Like the Sivir tried very hard to carry that. You can tell by the damage she did. She was doing a lot. And I feel like in the last team fight, if they managed to if they managed to commit on Camille a bit earlier, then maybe they could have taken that team fight. Because I feel like there was a bit of there was a bit of like a. Disparity when I like because you know how like Zach was like diving in to try to catch out the Ezreal and then there was like a There was at one point where the team was just essentially split There were like two people trying to focus Camille and then the uh, Zach is trying to catch up and stuff like that So yeah, it's overall solid well played by both teams That's Interesting people are asking for money did someone bet What I don't know what happened <laughs> Yeah, you got any final thoughts on that game, Lawrence? Um, yeah, we thought that the mid game could potentially snowball out of control, but um, I guess it was mainly Saligo fanboy and uh, Night Raven doing a very good job of peeling, uh, as, as well as just you know good positioning by uh, the AD carry players or the, the the mid lane playing the AD carry and the actual AD carry player um, to basically allow themselves to stay safe while they farmed up and just amass the gold to get to the items that they needed to to start killing the B tan. All right, so that's actually going to like, that's actually going to, I think, end the stream for tonight for the League of Legends department, I believe. Um, like, 
well not I but but like I, I I'm actually very excited to watch um I'm actually very excited to watch what happens tomorrow because like we did see like the skill disparity like you can see how close these games can actually get yeah can't wait for the elimination stage yeah definitely um and have a good time uh, tomorrow doing all this. Be sure to tune back in um, for the League of Legends tournament. Uh, this is the qualifier bracket. We're going to have the actual bracket all, all happening tomorrow. Um, yeah. If, if it's anything as hype as it has been uh, all of today, it should be. Yeah, no, uh, it, it's going to get pretty hype. I, I'm out of words. <laughs> So we're currently um, actually going to send it over to, not quite yet, I forgot who we were going to send it over to. I don't know, I think that's it. We hope and be back tomorrow at 12pm. Yes, that's when the action is going to start. We're going to be on for a whopping 10 hours. My voice is not ready for that. I'm going to need to drink a lot of green tea tonight. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. My voice isn't ready for that. No part of me is ready for that. Uh, we're going to do it. It's, it's okay. It'll be great. But yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate the love in the chat. And like, you guys have the power to send it over to Galchos Gaming. Uh, I personally don't. I'm not a mod. Neither is Heinrich Schmitz. But yeah, don't forget to follow our socials. We have our Twitter on our left. I'm pointing at the right. Twitter on the left. <laughs> Twitch on the right. Come watch me at times. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're definitely going to have a lot more cohesion tomorrow now that the brackets are going to be finalized, and I can't wait for that. I'm not even going to try. I think I, I think I reversed my camera. But anyways, uh, yeah. We will see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Uh, there we go. <laughs>